Hello folks and welcome to uh, Linux for Seniors. So in today's video, I am going to, sorry about that, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, assigning applications and functions to a single key on your keyboard that you pick, that you pick. Example would be, this is MXXFCE. Keys like that. Or another key like that. This is going to an application. This application is Gthumb, you know, for like viewing your uh, photos, for instance. Or another example would be another key that does calculator. I'll just do the simple one here. Okay. If that interests you, then keep watching because I'm, I'm uh, the reason I, I did this because my keyboard doesn't have those dedicated calculator keys or power keys on my keyboard. And a lot of your folks out there don't have those keys either. You know, you can always click these things and click these things. I'm doing this with one key. All I do is a single click now. All right, I actually use this quite often. So MXXFCE is what this video is about today. Now I'm going to talk about the uh, subscription key here. Just give me one minute. Uh, basically, if you don't know anything about my channel, I created Linux for Seniors last month in February and I now have about somewhere in the vicinity of 50 videos. That's not too bad for less than a month. I did have a previous channel that's discontinued that had over 450 videos. I created Linux for seniors for a couple of reasons. One is uh, for seniors that are, well, there's a lot of seniors retiring right now and they're starting to learn how to use computers or possibly they just want to spend time having fun using computers. Either way, I'm doing uh, videos in a slightly different way. Yes, they're long. They're more than two minutes. None of my videos are under two minutes. Some people may think that's winded. Some people may say, well, I like to click on short videos. You know what? This is not that place. But there's a lot of people also, they may appreciate the fact that I take the extra time to explain things in a less technical jargon and spend some extra time pointing out certain functions and how to do things and give you tips along the way with my 25 years worth of experience with Linux. Hopefully you can appreciate that. More importantly, I recommend that you subscribe. So um, if you have, welcome to Linux for Seniors. And as with any seniors, uh, we'd like big things. So basically, I am not filming in 4K. This desktop does look gorgeous in 4K, and it did when I actually installed it. But I reduced the, the screen resolution to 1080 because I wanted big things to be shown on these videos. I do have some things in 4K, but most of my stuff is done in 1080. So I picked large themes and more importantly, loud, large mouse pointers and other stuff. Now let's continue. So MX. XFCE. And we're going to talk about, and my username is Mr. Senior, so we're going to talk about this box right here. But before I do that, I want to give you what I, I'm using for styles, icons, and fonts. So that's my style. There's some my icon sets, and the fonts are uh, very large. If you make any changes to your system, I always recommend screenshots. I'm going to talk about the importance of screenshots in a little bit. Now I'm going to click keyboard. It's under the hardware section and settings. And I'm going to click the middle field here called Application Shortcuts. And I'm going to give you a ton of tips and I'm going to walk you through this completely and give you the whole steps on how to create this icon here or this shortcut and also the other one here to this particular application or program. All right. So the first tip that I'm going to give you when you're inside of this box is be very careful with this remove key when you have something highlighted. So if I hit remove now, it is gone. There's no undo. So be very careful about what you un, uh, remove. And I will actually do this one right here in front of you right now. But I'm going to first give you the uh, this way. Uh, I'm sorry, this text in here in a larger format in a second. So before I hit remove key, I'm going to actually minimize this and open up my file manager, Thunar. If you have seen my other video for Thunar, I believe it's already posted. I show basically how I do stuff like this. But I'm going to open up my documents folder and I have a I have created this text file. It's nothing big. It's just something for you to view. And you're probably going, well, isn't this uh, Linux for seniors? This is too small for me. 
That's fine. I'll make it larger for you. Is that better? Some of my old subscribers know exactly what I'm doing here. But more importantly, I'm going to talk about also calculator, which is calculator, and Jigthumb. I want you to notice the spelling while I'm in here. What this co uh, command does here is I'm going to perform that in here. And I would suggest you possibly either take out your digital photo, do a screenshot on your system, hit subscribe, however you want to save this. Hit pause, handwrite it on a piece of paper if you like. But more importantly, I do encourage that you subscribe. You can always come back to this video. And I will have a timeline and chapters in here. So let me break this down for you. How do you how you would type this in? XFCE4 no space dash no space session one word no space dash no space logout all one contiguous line. I have the luxury of copying this. You don't. That's why I'm just mentioning this. So I'm going to close this box and I'm going to open up my settings box. Where is it at? And we're going to create this from from scratch. I'm going to walk you through the whole process. So first I'm going to click this thing and hit remove. Be very careful of what you remove as I said earlier. So I'm going to remove that and I'm going to hit the add key and I want to right click and paste that in there. You would have to type this out one more time. XFCE4 no space dash session no space dash logout all one contiguous line. So the next question you need to ask yourself what key do you want to use? Because I don't have to use the previous one I used before. So some of the things you need to think about is one, you don't want to use an enter key and possibly the F11 key. Why the F11 key? Well, the F11 key is used in your web browsers normally for doing full screen and not full screen. Some of the other ones that are already picked are like F10, F7, F4. And yes, you can do combinations, but this kind of defeats my purpose of using one key. But you can do multiple functions in here by creating that. You can see that in here that uses three. And control alt and t and for for the terminal box for instance but i'm going to use a single key in this video so i have a key in mind that uh, basically i've tried it out it's convenient and it's not in use it's f12 so i'm going to click ok i don't use the that feature there and the next is asking me to press a key press a keyboard key that triggers the command that logout session thing okay f12 it is and uh, when you do this kind of stuff, it jumps to the next line. I just wanted to let you see that. And you want to test your key immediately to make sure it works. And it does. Because if you mistype something, it's going to give you an error. I'm going to show you that in the next example. So in the next example, I'm not going to bother opening up my text file because I know what this is. So I'm going to go to my menu and type in GT. I want you to notice that G thumb is spelled with a lowercase g and the uppercase T H U M B. Now, if I use that command in here, it will fail. Let me show you that example. So I'm going to delete that on purpose. Remove it, in other words. Make sure whatever you're doing, click on it first. And make sure that you are absolutely sure before you hit this remove key. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to hit add. And I'm going to use the spelling just like they did. So it was lowercase g, uppercase thumb, b, right? Let's double check that. gt, thumb, gt, thumb. It looks just like it. So I'm going to be very careful and go in here and click in this box instead of outside the box because it'll miss trigger sometimes. And now it's saying press a key for this g thumb thing. Well, I am going to use f7 because I de determined that key is not being used somewhere else. And I press it and it takes it and it looks nice and happy. Except when I test it, it gives me an error. Failed to launch shortcut F7. Failed to execute child process. It's just a simple explanation that you misspelled something because it's in quotes. There's no such file or directory, which is accurate. So G thumb exists in your menu, but that's not how the system runs that particular application or program. It needs to be in lowercase. You remember my text file that I opened earlier? Everything was in lowercase. If you look at that, if you look at the commands in here, they're all in lowercase, except for that mail reader part here, because it has a switch on it. This dashes. All right. So, anyways, in most cases, you want to use lowercase commands. All right. Let's. Do I want to go fix this thing? Now I jump to the next one. So I need. If I wanted to try to edit, I would do that. I don't use the edit key in this distribution. I actually advocate remove. 
So I'm making sure that I'm highlighting the correct one that is messed up and I'm going to hit remove and add it again. This time I'm going to use the lowercase. And you can see how fast you can do this. I'm going to use F7 again and then I'm going to press F7 and it works. It goes through that GThumb application. Can you use other applications? Absolutely. It's the whole purpose of this thing. So now you can see that I used the lowercase. Okay. So basically I'm using G thumb. I'm, I just double clicked on it just to let you see that this is the text. Okay. Assigned to F7. I'm going to close that box. So calculator is the same thing. Go in here. Calculator is a calculator. So I'm just going to put in G and it usually will find the first G that it looks for. So calculator spelled with an uppercase in here, but a lowercase in here. And again, it's an F10 that I signed that one to. So if you want me to recreate that from scratch, I will do. So as a good exercise, I'm going to delete that. Make sure that you highlight what you want to delete. Remember that one. Add. So what if I put an extra A in there? What happens to this? So I'm going to use... Um, the F10 again, everything looks nice and happy, right? Until I press the F10, I get the same error because it's misspelled. Okay, well, remove, add. So if the command exists, it will take it. So calculator, I am going to use F10 and press F10 and I'm done. Other than to change my views if I wanted to do that. So, so I just gave you three examples today. Different applications, uh, but more importantly, I don't have a dedicated um, power key on my keyboard, so this comes in very handy for me. And I actually use that in just about every Linux XFCE distribution. Oh, and you said what now? Yes, I actually use this command in every XFCE distribution that I have. So now would be a good time to maybe copy this, make a screenshot, subscribe maybe for later reference. I will have a timeline in here with a little, if you want to call them bookmarks, they're called chapters, but more importantly, they're like bookmarks. But I still encourage you to subscribe. Now let's talk about the importance of screenshots one more time. Type in SC in here and look for that tool. So my favorite is Active Window. I don't like entire screens. It makes big files and I don't really need the desktop photo. Maybe you want that, but do entire screen if you like the panel bar and, and your background, your wallpaper in other words. I do active window. You can capture the mouse pointer if you want, but I'm not. It has to be inside this window though. It never takes a picture of itself. So even if you lay this right here, it will never appear in your screenshot. This box right here. I don't use these keys and I'll leave this one alone because I want the border. I'm going to hit OK. It gives me a mini thumbnail. The, the default action is save. I'm going to hit OK. I just need to decide where I want to save it. I'm going to send this to the desktop or save it to the desktop. So my path is Mr. Senior, my user, desktop. I leave the name alone and hit save. Now let's go look at this screenshot and talk about why I'd want to make a screenshot. So I'm going to click this open. And uh, if this is too small for you, I'm going to pu pull my magic trick and make it bigger for you if you like. And then scroll, uh, basically use this little guy in here to go up and let you see all the stuff in here. And I'm going to resize it back. All right, what I'm doing here is the same magic trick I pulled earlier. I'm using the control key while holding it down while scrolling on my computer mouse to resize this from nothing to larger. So there's another tip for you inside of screenshots. So the importance of screenshots is this. Now I can take this file, rename it. I can also save it to my local folder. I can also save it to a another hard drive internally, another device in other words, or external hard drives, or more importantly, a USB stick is the easiest, most convenient way to save my screenshots. Then I can take and transport that green shot, screenshot and take my USB stick over to a brand new installed other Linux distribution of the XFCE desktop and take a look at my screenshots and perform these commands. Because they're generally the same. They're generally the same. So you have a a reference. But more importantly, I'm going to talk about what happens a lot of time to your system. And you install these Linux distributions on really old computers. 
You know, sometimes what happens to your hard drive on old computers is they die. They just all of a sudden give up the ghost and now you're stuck. You're, you don't remember what your settings were. Um, maybe you didn't even make back backups of your personal file, which is always poor. You should always back up your personal files to some other device besides the one you have booted in. Whether it's an external hard drive, internal hard drive, in other words, another hard drive, or a big old fat USB stick. I want you to notice how big this file is. This is 98 kilobytes. It practically fits on any USB stick. I don't care how small that USB stick is. And you can put several of these things on there. But more importantly, I can take that USB stick and save it somewhere. And then when I install, reinstall MX, I can open this back up and put these settings back in my, well, the settings. Because I have this nice screenshot here of uh, the dude that created uh, Linux for Seniors. He gave me some advice about that. And he also told me that I can use this command on other Linux distributions that use the XFCE desktop. Well, you can give it a try. You don't have to take my word for it. But more importantly, the importance of screenshots with any system settings is in case of hard drive failures and also if you are using, in this case, these kind of settings, if you want to duplicate them from a failed hard drive or you're do trying out another Linux distribution and you want this feature that I'm doing right now as one example. That's the importance of screenshots. On that note, folks, I will say hopefully you subscribed and you folks have a wonderful tomorrow.